Professional soccer has arrived in Spokane, and it's a gorgeous March Saturday in Northwest Washington. It's the home debut for Spokane Velocity FC against Richmond Kickers at beautiful One Spokane Stadium. The atmosphere has been building all week, and it's finally here. It's USL League One Soccer on ESPN+. I'm Donnie Barnes. Well, here we go. Welcome to USL League One Spokane Velocity, owned by Ryan Harnato and wife Katie serving as club presidents. They decided to buy the club during the COVID pandemic, and here we are a few years later blazing that trail. One Spokane Stadium seating approximately 5,000 fans. It can fit up to 8,000, and it's expected to be sold out and jam-packed tonight. The 509 Syndicate, the rapid-growing club supporter group that will be loudly supporting Spokane Velocity today and throughout the year. We'll keep an eye on Luis Heal, who will be one of the central figures for Spokane Velocity this year. They will look to veterans like Luis to both calm things down and raise the temperature when appropriate on a big day like this. One of the most experienced players on the roster, so good at both dropping deep to defend and creating counterattacks and scoring chances with those line-splitting passes as an attacking midfielder. And head coach Lee Veedman says he wants Velocity to play a forward-thinking game, and he's critical to that. Meanwhile, Richmond, with some new kicks this year, they have added Adrian Billhart, who was a champion in this league two years ago with Tormenta. Ryan Shello added as well. Maxi Shenfield will get a start today. Arthur Boshua, who scored some big goals for Tormenta the last couple of seasons. And Pablo Hara, their new goalkeeper. It is a new era between the sticks for Richmond this year. Neil Vignals, one of their key figures, their key returners. He will pull the strings in the midfield. One of the best midfielders in all of League One the last couple of years, as evidenced by his place in the League One All League First Team last season. They'll need a big game from him today as they have lots of injuries this afternoon. This region has been waiting for this day for years. New stadium, new club, the first chance to see and live their colors in person. Will their team respond with their first victory, or can Richmond spoil the party in Northwest Washington? Kickoff next. At Eastern Washington University, students and faculty work side by side to restore a lost prairie and decrease our carbon footprint. Composers are writing music to help us understand how salmon migrate. And urban and regional planning students partner with cities to gather the data they need to address homelessness. Interdisciplinary education that gets real about the real world. That's Eastern Washington University and you. Spokane Professional Men's Soccer is here. Don't miss the historic first season in one Spokane stadium. Your Spokane Velocity FC take on Northern Colorado Hailstorm FC on Saturday, March 23rd, and Central Valley Fuego FC on Saturday, April 27th. Get your tickets now. Spokane is the home to the highest level of professional women's soccer in the country. Spokane Zephyr FC will play at one Spokane Stadium this August. Get your season tickets now. The winds of change are blowing. Be a part of history with your Zephyr FC. Back at one Spokane Stadium, you see this packed crowd. 5,000 plus expected today. The first ever Rumble. It is a new tradition that they are debuting today and it figures to be a fixture before every home match here at One Spokane Stadium. Let's look at the first ever starting 11 at home for the Spokane Velocity as these fans are ready for this first ever home match and for their side coming off that 3-1 defeat to Greenville last week they go with a 4-2-3-1 as it looks like we're about ready to kick off a little early as uh, Richmond who are wearing their Traditional red kits, they are back in their traditional red this year, and their fans are loving that. And Spokane, meanwhile, in the whites. As Richmond will kick us off today, they will be attacking from left to right in this opening half. 
And we are in motion in Spokane. Spokane Velocity for the first time ever at one Spokane Stadium. And Richmond Kicker is one of the longest running clubs in the country. Big day, big atmosphere. And who will come away with a big result here this afternoon? Right away, Velocity FC moving the ball, but it's won back by Neil Vignoles, who looks to slice his way ahead. It's Vignoles, and it was almost the perfect start for Richmond. Wow. We are expecting excitement today. These are two sides that want to possess, want to pass and play through the lines, want to attack. And Neil Vignoles, who we highlighted in our open, is the key figure for Richmond. Somebody that Darren Sawatsky has spoken about repeatedly over the last couple of years is one of the best midfielders in all of League One. He feels could play at the championship level as well. And nearly giving the kickers a lead inside the opening minute. And now they uh, throw in one by the midfield stripe for Spokane. Wonderful color clash here today under bright sunshine. Temperature in the 60s. Beautiful mid-March day. You see the fans on the far side filling almost every seat there. The main stand on the near side, out of camera shot at the moment. Very steep, very large, and also very packed. This venue also hosts lots of high school football games during the fall, the greater Spokane area, but wonderfully and crucially, they're able to eliminate the American football lines. Make this a true soccer pitch whenever needed. And that was something that was insisted upon when this stadium was being built. And it's a tremendous touch that makes this such a great facility, among other things. That ball hanging up on that turf and claimed by goalkeeper Carlos Marancio, who played in USL Championship, made seven appearances with Rio Grande Valley FC last year. He's also with FC Tucson in League One prior to that. See Darren Sawatsky in the foreground there, wearing his trademark black game day outfit, the black pants and shoes and belt and black shirt. And that switch of play, errant, and out for a Richmond throw. Lee Viedman, the head coach for Spokane Velocity. He was an assistant with Charleston Battery last year before Velocity hired him in November to build out this roster. And there is the Spokane bench, and you can see the back of Lee Viedman's head there. From Liverpool, played at Liverpool and Everton Youth Academies, came to the U.S. to play college soccer in western Iowa and eastern Nebraska in the Omaha area. Chance to build out this squad from the beginning. This squad on the defensive here, Adrian Bilhart, one of those key acquisitions, uh, played it off a velocity player, and here come the home side. And down this left side they charge. Spokane choosing to pull it back and play for some possession. That's a wonderful switch down the right now. Kamarni Smith with a chance to attack. Serves it into the middle, and it's in! A sparkling start for Spokane. Welcome to the edge. Welcome to one Spokane Stadium. Velocity lead, 1-0. The first ever home goal in their first ever home match comes less than four minutes in, and it's Kamarni Smith. And did he mean this? Probably not, but who cares? Trying to cross, perhaps. It turns into a perfect shot from that acute angle. Clanking off that far post and in, leaving Pablo Hara stranded and leaving Spokane Velocity. A goal to the good inside five minutes. Roman Metonier with the goal. With that attempted cross. And so Spokane Velocity with the early marker. And just what they would have wanted, of course, to get this big crowd fully engaged. Well, Lee Viedman could hardly have dreamed of a better start. 
both managers in black today. Well, now some early work to do for Richmond, who had such a tough end to last year. Went 16 games without a victory after July 1st, even though they took the lead many times. Played better than perhaps their final record would indicate, but struggled to put chances away. And they are a side struggling with injuries in the early weeks this year. Their star striker, Emiliano Terzaghi, who won three straight Golden Boots, three consecutive MVP awards. It was hampered by injuries throughout the second half of last season, and that coincided with their struggle and their inability to score goals down the stretch. He is having to miss this first game of the year. Darren Sawatsky said he was starting to fly in preseason, but then picked up an injury, and so not able to go today. They're also missing their two center backs, who would normally slot into those positions, Nathan Oni and Guy Franca. And Joao Gomero also picked up a knock and will be out this week. So four members of the starting 11 not able to go for this opener, this cross-country trip and in a very hostile and festive atmosphere. Darren Zawatsky talked about needing to hang around in those first 20 or 30 minutes, finding themselves a goal behind less than four minutes in. Can. Not afraid to go long out of the back. That was something Lee Viedman talked about. They want to play passing football, possession-based soccer, but he's okay with going long when they need to. Well, scan the QR code to play now. Footballer Fuel for your guarantee to win one of 20 unique participating Spokane and Coeur d'Alene local restaurant discounts. Thank you to our Football Fuel partners, Caruso's, De Leon's Taco and Bar, The Burger Dock, Flat Stick Pub, TT's Barbecue, Jimmy John's, Casa Tap House, IHOP, and Steam Plant Restaurant and Brew Pub. Free kick for Spokane. Spokane possessing at the back. Working the ball very fluidly. And more fancy dribbling. Chance to work through the midfield. Richmond eventually snuffed that out. After that early steal and shot from Neil Vignoles inside the first minute, Richmond with not a lot going forward so far. Again, they knew they were going to have to hang in these opening minutes. Now they have a free kick as Vignoles was bundled over. with a chance to have some possession, work themselves into this game. Calm things down after that early goal. Zaka Moran. And this will be a throw for Richmond as we approach nine minutes. Spokane falling 3-1 to Greenville last week. Scored first when Josh Doling tallied a penalty in the 14th minute. Greenville scoring the last three. Lee Viedman really happy with how his team played, though. Hope they just didn't finish their chances as well as they could have. Greenville only had four shots on target, but scored three of them. There is Roman Metonair, the goal scorer in the fourth minute. Lee Viedman thrilled with the work rate and the intensity of his side last week despite the result. Looking for their first points in club history today. Off to an ideal start in that quest. Boy, does Metonair look good early on.
interesting shape here from Spokane. They're not pressing much, but in really solid lines and not presenting Richmond with too many avenues to work their way forward. We haven't seen too much of Derek Waldeck sprinting down that left side for Spokane from the left back spot in the early going. It's been Metanair down the right side instead. That was lost, but because of a foul, a defensive free kick for Spokane. Lee Viedman's, Viedman saying this week, it's a balance of how I want to play and how the USL tends to be in general. He says, I see the game as very forward thinking as they're working their way forward here. Interesting ball to the right. And the back heel, and Metanair is continuing on the overlap. Scuffed away from him and chested down by Adrian Bilhart, who looks to spring somebody forward, and Vignoles. Continues his run. This is Vignoles looking good. Vignoles, will he shoot? Nil Vignoles, what a save. Carlos Marancio cut down the angle, made himself big, and blocked it with the right thigh. First save of the match for the Spokane goalkeeper. And again, Nil Vignoles, the danger man for Richmond. Well, it opened up for Vignoles there as nobody stopped him. Vignoles almost equalized all on his own. James Vaughn, one of the newer members of this Richmond club. Zawatsky talking about how youth is going to have to be central to the club's identity going forward. He said, we have seven guys on our roster that are teenagers that are going to play significant minutes, so the future is in the young ones here in Richmond. Those were his words this week. He said, we needed to go after veteran guys that were a fit for the culture and want the experience of playing for a club that's an awesome place to play. They have two 17-year-olds in the starting 11 today. And Griffin Garnett, one of the center backs, as this ball over the top. And that was Dakota Barneth in the other center back. And perhaps a bit of a mix-up with Simon Fitch, who had dropped back with him. And they concede the first corner of the match. All corners presented by ICCU, your financial success fan club. And Luis Hill, who figures to take many of the set pieces for Spokane Velocity this year. It's something he did quite a bit of in Omaha the last couple seasons. And his delivery from dead ball situations, part of what makes him such a dangerous all-around player. Being told to wait by referee Yannick Rothfuss. Well, again, Richmond have to hang in here can't concede a second goal inside 15 minutes. It's the home fans rumbling their feet on these new stands. And Hill going back post. And there's goal number two. And the sensational start at home continues for Spokane Velocity. They could not have dreamed of beginning better in their new ground for their new club. 2-0. It was the service from Hill, back post. Wide open from the elbow of that six yard box. Gorgeous ball. Richmond will ask questions about their marking. What a beautiful header to that back stick.
Ahmed Longmire got big. And bags Spokane second. Now Richmond really up against it. That was a big weakness for them last year. Defense from set pieces. They were a really strange side in that regard because they were great from attacking set pieces, especially late in the year. Most of their goals over the last couple months of last season came from corner kicks and free kicks. They were lethal when they were on the attacking side of those. They were extremely brittle defensively from the same situations. And it's rare to see a club that's both those things at the same time, as this will be a, another free kick for Spokane. Normally, if you bat at set pieces, you're bad on both sides of the ball. But it wasn't the case for Richmond last year. Great on one side, very poor on the other. And so, of course, they were hoping to maintain the one while shoring up the other. When I asked Darren Sawatsky about that midweek, he said that it was still a work in progress, and especially with so many young pieces on this team. He wasn't quite sure how it was going to go early this season. Said set pieces is about personnel, and we're a little young on set pieces. We have good moments and moments where we still need to grow. And we're hopeful that we'll be better defending than we were last year. Well, unfortunately for them, their first defensive set piece this season results in a goal against. Obviously, just the first game of a long year, so plenty of time to write things and for things to go much better in that regard for Richmond. But not the start they were hoping for in any sense. It's Way out of his goal mouth came Pablo Hara to head that out into touch. Spokane really looking to put things away early on here. Pablo Hara coming over from Tormenta, of course. Josh Dolling was after that for Spokane. Richmond have got to find a way out here and to start building some things forward. And it's somebody other than just Neil Vignals. The wonderful atmosphere at one Spokane Stadium. And they are being given every reason to make noise in these opening 18 minutes. Now a chance for Richmond to counter. And that square ball left a bit short. Nicholas Simmons after it, but tackled away. Nicholas Simmons, by the way, the youngest ever goal scorer in Richmond kickers history. And of course, they go back to 1993. Scored one late last year. The other of those 17-year-olds in the starting 11 today. This will be a free kick right on that near touch line. Neil Vignal's taken down again. And so now the first chance for Richmond to do something from an attacking set piece. And we'll see if they can be as dangerous from these as they were last year. They could sure use a quick one back here to find their footing in this game. Vignal's right up to deliver it himself against a two-man wall. The red shirts bunching beyond the penalty spot. Adrian Billhart standing in some space there on the edge of the box. Vignoles, back post, good punch. Carlos Marancio had to get something to it, otherwise there were two red shirts queuing up at that back stick. It was a teasing delivery from Vignoles. Here comes that long throw that Richmond used a lot last year. Flick down into the area, and they have one back. And that's exactly what Richmond needed. And it's the new acquisition, Adrian Bilhart, who makes his presence known right away in game one of 2024 for Richmond. 20 minutes gone. What a game in this first ever game at One Spokane Stadium. It's 2-1.
It's not technically an attacking set piece, but again, it's something else that Richmond were really good at last year, and they do it again early this season. The long throw bounces around, not dealt with by Spokane, and slammed home with that gorgeous left foot by Adrian Bilhart. That left foot is his calling card, of course. Scored a number of big goals for Tormenta on their way to a League One title in 2022. And Darren Zawatsky spoke about his championship know-how and pedigree, one of the reasons they went out and got him. And so now the kickers are into the game and into this 2024 season. Remember, they did not play last week. They were idle. And so this is their first outing of 2024. They thought they had themselves a throw there, but not the case, says referee Yannick Rothfuss. I mean, both teams look so dangerous every time they spring forward, don't they? Free kick now for Spokane in the attacking third. The ease with which both these sides are able to dart between the lines. As you see our officiating crew today, led by Yannick Rothfuss. Justin St. Pierre is the fourth official. Cephas Kortsen and Sergei Ceylon, the assistant referees along the touch lines. Referees all in black today. Two around this for Spokane. Luis Hill does the honors again. And again, it's dangerous and Hara. And a looping ball that probably was headed wide. Smothers and claims. Another dangerous delivery from a set piece for Spokane. See it again, Hill so full of quality from those situations. Look at the space through the midfield when Richmond are able to play through. Vignals doing exactly what we expected him to do in this first half. Switch near side. Fitch does well to keep it in play and find a teammate. That is James Vaughn. And he'll keep possession. So. Metanair in the fourth minute, Longmire in the 15th for Spokane, Bill Hart, the response in the 20th for Richmond. Windermere Foundation is thrilled to welcome our charity of the month. It's more than a home, it's a way to give back. Visit our site at www.windermerefoundation.com as this runs out for a goal kick. And fans, welcome to the 2024 USL kickoff presented by Terminix. Throughout the month of March, the USL will be kicking off across the country. Join us for all the action on ESPN and CBS Sports platforms. Long goal kick has to be dealt with by Richmond and just, <laughs> I mean just was, before Kamarni Smith could make it 3-1. That was Maxi Schenfeld, who was caught a little bit by that bounce. This is really high-tech synthetic turf on this new field. And sport turf has come a long way over the last 20 years. And this is a multi-layer sport turf that plays very close to grass, they tell us. That's taken down well by Fitch. Now Bill Hart looking to cut inside. Saka Moran. Square for Schenfeld. Wide for Sirikowski. Spell of possession now for the visitors. As their confidence has clearly risen after that goal. Now Vignals has some space again. Tries that line sp splitting pass. Rolling toward the penalty spot and finally dealt with and wandered away and a chance perhaps for Spokane to counter. Pierre Reedy chooses to take the safe option.
really good flow to this match over the opening 25 and a half minutes. Had very few whistles. Uh, so there's a poor touch by Maxi Schenfeld and throw for Spokane. Select is the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.select-sport.com for the latest select products, specials, and more. Select the player's choice. Couldn't have asked for better weather in mid-March here in Spokane. This inaugural match at this gorgeous venue. Spokane, whose official colors are Rapid River White, Impact Blue, and Basalt. Now Adrian Billhart, as they look to equalize here. Billhart squaring it across the face of goal. Last ditch defending by Ahmed Longmire. Out for an attacking throw. Richmond very much in this now after they were in danger of being swamped in the opening 20 minutes. It's an intelligent ball down the line. Sirikowski crossing back post. Nobody was there in red. Kept in by Schenfeld. That was way too easy, I think, from Spokane's perspective. Just a simple throw from the near touch line, and suddenly Sirikowski was free on that end line. Sirikowski might be a little disappointed with his delivery on that cutback, although maybe he thought he had a runner at the back post. This is the first of four matches in USL League One today. About an hour and a half, Charlotte Independence will kick off against one Knoxville. Tor Tormenta, two hours from now, at 7.30 Eastern, home to forward Madison, as they look to bounce back from a disappointing loss last week. Meanwhile, squared, and here's Bill Hart! Looking for the equalizer, looking for his second, blocked crucially. Marcelo Lage threw himself in the way and needed to. Bill Hart, point blank range here, but there was Lodge. Otherwise, it was likely 2 2. And a strike from the top of the area deflects all the way through, and Carlos Morancio falls on top. Well, Velocity fans, get match ready with the latest Velocity merchandise. Shop online or in the team store at Davenport Grand Hotel in Spokane. And Velocity fans, scan the QR code to get your single match tickets today. See that QR code to the right of the score bug, at the top left of your screen. Vignol's trying to shield. Played off it by Hill and company. Spokane throw as we approach the half hour mark. 29 minutes have flown by. Now some space on the left. Kill drifting all over the pitch. Anywhere there's danger, he's at the heart of it. Rolls to Dolling, and Dolling tried to get himself turned. Defended by a couple red shirts. And that is a Spokane throw as they keep the pressure on. Quickly back into play by Waldeck. Then Hills cross, defended well. Dolling was marauding by that penalty spot. Now Vignoles looks to start the counter. Down this left side they come, looking for the free kick, and the referee not interested. We play on. Now we play to full 30. You hear the appreciation and the response from this capacity crowd of over 5,000. Every little play from the home side being applauded. And here they go now with another mazy run. Played down the right, it's gonna stick and hang up and stay in play. Then the cross, arriving! What a chance! 
Well, Luis Hill, usually the provider, doesn't score much. We'll feel he could have done better there. You can see this turf a little spongy, so you can put a lot on it. The ball will hang up and stay in, and Hill arriving just outside that six-yard area, trying to guide it toward the near post. And I think if he had to do it over again, he would have tried to head that back to the far side. So often, strikers are taught, head it back where it came from. Much easier to do that, plus the goalkeepers moving away from that side, and it's very difficult for them to get back. And I suspect that's what Hill will be telling himself when he watches that back. Well, again, Velocity fans, get match ready with the latest Velocity merchandise. Shop online or in the team store at Davenport Grand Hotel in Spokane. So much great Velocity merch on offer. And the Rapid River White and the Impact Blue. Free kick for the Rapid River White. And some frustration from 17-year-old Nicholas Simmons. And Yannick Brothfuss perhaps telling him to settle down. So space between the thirds now for Velocity. Pierre Reedy. Great interplay, top of the area. Out wide it goes. Derek Waldeck didn't have the angle to serve one into the box. Now Reedy as they'll reset with Marcelo Lage. Roman Metaner. And out falls to Dalling, who miscontrolled it. Had a good chance to be one on one with the last defender there if he could have taken it down more cleanly. And some defending to do for Spokane Velocity, which Lodge comes across to do in a no nonsense fashion. USL League One is on CBS Sports and ESPN platforms all season long. Catch live matches and expert analysis every day on the CBS Sports Golazo Network and ESPN Plus. Go to uslleague1.com for the complete USL TV listings. Richmond, who fell behind by two early goals, pulled one back on 20 minutes. A couple decent chances to make it 2-2. Spokane have also had a couple opportunities to score their third. Certainly does not feel like we are done with the goals today by any stretch. Again, Charlotte and one knocks, Tormenta forward Madison. Fuego Union Omaha still to come later today. This is offside as Simmons has the flag raised against him. In USL championship play right now, it's already gone final a little bit earlier. Louisville City defeating El Paso Locomotive on the road by a goal to nil. 72nd minute, Indy 11 on the road at Memphis 901, leading 2 nil. After Memphis 901 won their season opener against Las Vegas Lights last week, but trailing by a couple with 20 minutes to play today. First ever match for Rhode Island FC, but they're trailing to New Mexico United 1 nil in the 72nd minute. And Loudoun United leading North Carolina FC 2-1 in the 76th. All the way back this goes to Carlos Morancio. And the long diagonal ball. Fitch needs to deal with it. And Simple take for Hara. Fitch did deal with it indeed. Ten minutes plus stoppage time until halftime. Game perhaps for the first time just hitting a slight low. As the two sides regain their breath.
Long out of the back from Dakota Barnathan. Morancio. Matanair. Josh Dalling, very strong. Beaten to that one. Mentioned it's a new era in goal for Richmond as Har with excellent distribution there. Finding the feet of Bill Hart. Didn't have options forward, so pulls it back to Fitch. Of course, Akira Fitzgerald was a fixture in goal for Richmond the last several seasons. Also become their goalkeeping coach as well. More on that after this attack by Ryan Sirakowski. His cross off the, well, it was off Sirakowski last. It's a goal kick. But Akira Fitzgerald moving on to North Carolina FC after last season as they moved up to USL Championship. And Darren Sawatsky telling us that Akira is a guy who went to school in that North Carolina Triangle area. His wife is from there as well. They just had a, a child, and this was a chance to be closer to family and for Akira to get one more chance to play at the higher level. And they were happy to make that happen. So Akira is our good friend. It's a feel-good story. And they went out and got Pablo Hara to be his replacement. Here's Reedy taking this down deftly. Pierre Reedy. Then Hill shouts for offside. Offside is given. But when I asked Darren Sawatsky why they chose Pablo Hara to be Akira Fitzgerald's replacement, He mentioned character and leadership. He said Pablo's the first guy here, the last to leave. If there's a piece of paper on the ground, he picks it up. He's a perfect role model for the young guys. He stays after games and lets five-year-old kids shoot on him. He said he's the perfect fit for the culture here. Hasn't had much he could do on either of the two goals against him in this first half. And his team still might rally and haul themselves level before the break. Here's Fitch. Deep cross near side, Simmons leaping over his head and out for a throw. More good ideas from Richmond. We're looking increasingly dangerous in the attack. Derek Waldeck taking this throw. They work their way out neatly, Spokane. That's a glimpse of the kind of soccer that Lee Viedman wants to play. That possession based style that's always looking to get forward. Get on the front foot. Get on the attack. See how quickly and crisply they move the ball. And this is a group that's only been training together, Lee Viedman said, for less than 30 days. That's another reason he was so pleased with how they played last week in Greenville, even though the result wasn't what they wanted. This long ball is onside and play continues. Lee Viedman feeling that all these patterns of play, all these aspects of their game, just going to get better as they play together more. What a great ball that is and just over the head of Josh Dalling. The thumbs up from him, excellent service. Goal kick for Richmond. Just slightly too tall for Dalling. It was Derek Waldeck with the left foot. Approaching the final five of the first half. Josh Dalling from London. Played for Las Vegas Lights in USL Championship last year. Played collegiately here in the U.S. at Missouri State. Scored the first goal in club history from the penalty spot last week. And so far today, it's been two members of the back line, Roman Metaner and Ahmed Longmire. 
who tallied in the opening 15 minutes. And they look for more before halftime. Hill. Left-footed strike. Spun wide. There were, was no deflection and a goal kick. Wasn't sure if that took a touch off a defender on its way through. That was Kamarni Smith. All right, aiming for the head of Nicholas Simmons. You can see where Simmons is going to develop into a very good target forward, and not just a big stationary target forward either. He'll have excellent mobility, already does. And at just 17 years old, he's going to get bigger and stronger. Already a handful to deal with. Will become even more so with time. Vignoles trying to slither his way through a tight space and does. Wonderful skill from Neil Vignoles, keeping the ball in play, wanting a free kick. And it's a throw for Spokane and Vignoles asking what else he has to do. That was a very impressive sequence from Neil Vignol showing his skill on the ball, feeling he deserved more from it. Well challenged and won by Smith. Lee Viedman applauding the effort in these final minutes of the first half. One of those long balls that has given the Richmond back line some issues in this first half. Hill trying to settle it and does. Flicking it over a defender. It's another excellent sliding tackle won by a Spokane player. And the crowd appreciating the effort. It's back with Marcelo Lage and then Carlos Marancio. At halftime, we'll show you highlights from the first week of League One action last week where there were three matches. Not everybody played, but six teams did, and we'll bring you highlights from those. We'll also have a feature on the new League One in-season cup competition. Mike Watts will tell us more about that. Of course, we'll have first half highlights and stats. Get you set for half number two, which if it's anything like this first half, should be wildly entertaining. Pierre Reedy, they're not done yet in this first half, Spokane. Crossed back post, nobody there in white. Wasn't going to bounce out of play though, had to be dealt with by Ryan Sirikowski. And again, we see on this turf, it's a bit of a, a dry surface today. And so that ball is sticking and hanging up. You can't assume it's going to bounce out really have to be proactive in playing it rather than trying to shield it out of play. Here's Dalling back to goal. This is where he's strong. Dalling looking for the layoff, but it was defended well. That's the kind of thing Josh Dalling can do though. Hold up play, bring teammates into the attack. Spokane thought they were going to have a throw, but not the case, says Yannick Rothfuss. In the final minute of the 45, we'll find out how much stoppage time we'll have momentarily. I think Richmond will be content to get to halftime down by just a goal after the very difficult start they endured. They'll be pretty happy with that overall. Right in the game, which 15 minutes in, you weren't sure they were going to be. Just one additional minute to be played in this opening half. Forward by Hill. Free kick, Richmond. Can Richmond create one more chance in this opening half? 
We had three goals in the first 20 minutes. Ablahara presenting himself for this short free kick. Dakota Barnathan lofted long in the direction of Nicholas Simmons, who got his head to it slightly. Now Vignoles lobbing it over the top. Moran after it, and Morancio helps usher it out. It is a goal kick. Will likely be the last action of this first half. Morancio to take one more goal kick. And likely head to the locker room. Yannick Rothfuss, there's the halftime whistle. What an opening half in the opening match at one Spokane Stadium, the first ever home game for Spokane Velocity. It began with a bang. The fourth minute goal from Roman Metaner. The 15th minute tally from Ahmed Longmire, direct from a corner. But Richmond struck back five minutes later in the 20th through Adrian Bilhart to haul themselves back into it. The sides traded chances over the rest of the first half. Great entertainment for this sellout crowd. And we're back with highlights from around the league from last week's opening matches and more next. At the break, Spokane Velocity 2, Richmond Kickers 1. It's true that a Windermere agent's client decided to experiment with power washing their deck a day before the house was supposed to go on the market. It's true that he may have accidentally destroyed said deck. Now, you might wonder, how did that deck get torn out, replaced, and stained in one day? In time for the listing to go live the next morning? We'll never tell. At Eastern Washington University, students and faculty work side by side to restore a lost prairie and decrease our carbon footprint. Composers are writing music to help us understand how salmon migrate. And urban and regional planning students partner with cities to gather the data they need to address homelessness. Interdisciplinary education that gets real about the real world. That's Eastern Washington University and you. Spokane Professional Men's Soccer is here. Don't miss the historic first season in one Spokane stadium. Your Spokane Velocity FC take on Northern Colorado Hailstorm FC on Saturday, March 23rd, and Central Valley Fuego FC on Saturday, April 27th. Get your tickets now. Spokane is the home to the highest level of professional women's soccer in the country. Spokane Zephyr FC will play at one Spokane Stadium this August. Get your season tickets now. The winds of change are blowing. Be a part of history with your Zephyr FC. Great first half at one Spokane Stadium, the home side in their home debut, leading Richmond by two goals to one. Well, last week we had three matches in League One play. You call it week zero, if you'd like. Not everybody was in an action, but half the league was. And we began. <laughs> and they would take an early lead. A penalty was given in the 14th minute. And Josh Dahling stepping up. Perfect placement on the penalty. The first goal in Spokane Velocity's history belonged to Josh Dahling. But the lead didn't last long, just four minutes, in fact. Because in the 18th minute, Zion Scarlett would benefit from a bit of a mix-up on the back line by Spokane. Scarlett got the final touch and was attempted to be cleared off the line but was put into the net instead. And then early in the second half, Evan Lee, who had put Greenville ahead for good. The initial strike was saved well by Carlos Morancio, but Lee following up, striking the volley well. And it was 2-1 Greenville. And then in the 60th minute, they would lead 3-1. More good work by Liam McKinnon down the left side. And what a back heel flick this was by Leo Castro. It was the goal of the week, understandably so. 3-1 Greenville over Spokane. Elsewhere, Lexington and Northern Colorado Hailstorm. We were expecting some uh, attacking fireworks in this one. Didn't quite materialize. Noah Powder did come close from the edge of the box. 
with that left-footed strike that just banged off the post and stayed out. Lexington with so many new signings this year, so much more firepower, really excited to see what they can do. They had a free kick on the edge of the box in the second half. A yellow card was shown to Noah Powder. And then Cameron Lancaster, so close to winning the game for them, but he also struck the woodwork, and it ended goalless in Kentucky. The other game last week, meanwhile, was Tormenta and Fuego in the debut of Jermaine Jones, the new head coach for Central Valley Fuego. And it couldn't have begun any better. In the very first minute, handball awarded against Tormenta. Mo Espinoza stepped up, sent the keeper the wrong way. Couldn't have asked for a better start for Jermaine Jones' head coaching career. And it was 1-0 Fuego right away. And in the 20th minute, it got even better for Central Valley. Espinoza's ball in was a good one. And after a frantic sequence, it was slammed off the post, came back out, and Ashkenov Apollon planted it into the back of the net for his first professional goal. 2-0 Central Valley inside 20 minutes. They would hang on down the stretch. Tormenta grew into the game late. In the 83rd minute, they pulled one back. That ball flicked all the way across the face of goal and was touched in by Gabriel Rodriguez. But they couldn't find the equalizer, and Fuego held on for three points on opening night. Can Spokane Velocity find their first three points in club history? We'll find out in just a bit. When we come back, more information on the new in-season cup that League One will be contesting. Mike Watts will have that for us when we return. Two get it done. When termites show up, so do we. Terminix it. Pain doesn't care who you are or why you hurt, but pain can be mastered if you know the way. Fight back with Tiger Balm's legendary herbal power. Trusted for over a hundred years, our proven blend of camphor, menthol, and essential oils tames pain with the strength and speed of the tiger so that you can rise above pain and get back to living. This is the way of the tiger. They're hungry for the women's game. They want to see women's soccer. They want to play women's soccer. And that's what we're building at the USL. You can see It's just like real camping. Ugh, we don't have real ants. Ew, what? Like I said, real camping. When ants show up, so do we. Terminix. In 2024, USL League One will introduce a new in-season cup competition built on regional rivalries and added dimensions to the game itself. Like cups around the world, this new tournament will consist of group play and a knockout round. The three groups of four will consist of the East Group, Charlotte, Greenville, Richmond, and Tormenta. The Central Group, Chattanooga, Knoxville, Lexington, and Madison. The West Group, Central Valley, Northern Colorado, Omaha, and Spokane. The clubs will play a home and away round robin within their group. Then they will play two matches, one home and one away, against two different teams from another group. In total, each club will play eight matches in group action. The top team in each group will advance to the semifinals, joined by the non-group leader with the most goals scored. This innovation will encourage more attacking and entertaining play. That's not the only fun adjustment. If a group stage game finishes tied at the end of regulation time, a penalty kick shootout will take place with an extra point in the standings on the line. 
the cup will evolve and grow over the next few years, bringing more drama and more memories for all. Eastern Washington University, students and faculty work side by side to restore a lost prairie and decrease our carbon footprint. Composers are writing music to help us understand how salmon migrate. And urban and regional planning students partner with cities to gather the data they need to address homelessness. Interdisciplinary education that gets real about the real world. That's Eastern Washington University and you. Spokane is the home to the highest level of professional women's soccer in the country. Spokane Zephyr FC will play at one Spokane Stadium this August. Get your season tickets now. The winds of change are blowing. Be a part of history with your Zephyr FC. Spokane Professional Men's Soccer is here. Don't miss the historic first season in one Spokane Stadium. Your Spokane Velocity FC take on Northern Colorado Hailstorm FC on Saturday, March 23rd, and Central Valley Fuego FC on Saturday, April 27th. Get your tickets now. It's true that a Windermere agent's client decided to experiment with power washing their deck a day before the house was supposed to go on the market. It's true that he may have accidentally destroyed said deck. Now, you might wonder, how did that deck get torn out, replaced, and stained in one day, in time for the listing to go live the next morning? We'll never tell. First half highlights in this first ever match at one Spokane Stadium. What a start for Spokane Velocity in the fourth minute. They get on the score sheet right away. Roman Metaner, not sure he meant this, probably trying to cross it. Who cares? From the home side's perspective, clanked in gorgeously off the near post. And 1-0, Spokane Velocity. Luis Heel then, beautiful delivery in the 15th minute, headed in gorgeously by Ahmed Longmire. Look how he gets up at the back post. Some questions to be asked probably on the marking from Richmond kickers, but still, that's a difficult header, leaning away from goal from the elbow of the six-yard box. But five minutes later, Richmond right back into it. Credit to them for uh, finding their way back into the match so quickly. And it was one of their new acquisitions, Adrian Billhart, brought in to be a difference maker, brought in to add some championship nows to this team. And what a big goal that was to pull them back in it. And they had some chances perhaps to level it up before the half as well. The two sides ended level on shots with five each and both with two on target. Possession was just about dead even too, 52 to 48%. And uh, no yellow cards in the match either. Yannick Rothfuss was able to let play flow very nicely in that first half. It was a beautiful half of soccer. And just the one goal separating the two sides as we get set for half number two as Richmond, who again are back in red this year. Some gorgeous red kits that they'll be wearing throughout the season. They introduced a beautiful third kit as well that's white with red trim and red numbers. Showed that off a couple days ago. So it's a really beautiful set of kids, kits for such a historic and traditional club in the American soccer scene. And Spokane Velocity back up for the second half as well. Rapid white kits. 
Really interesting to see how this second half goes. Spokane looked like they were going to completely swamp Richmond in the opening 15. Richmond grew themselves into the game after that Bill Hart goal. Neil Vignoles was very dangerous throughout that first half. So what tweaks and adjustments have both sides and both coaches made behind the scenes? As we get set for half number two, Spokane will be moving from left to right across your screen. This Washington sunshine on this gorgeous Saturday afternoon at this brand new stadium. Sold out crowd, 5,000 plus. Will they witness their club's first ever victory today? Or will Richmond stage a second half fight back and claim at least a point or possibly more to spoil the party? It was loud and boisterous in the first half. What will we see in half number two? Yannick Rothfuss checking his watch. Here we go again. Second half at one Spokane Stadium. First match of the year for Richmond, second for Spokane. Again, the first of four games around USL League One today. They go on the attack right away. Pierre Reedy, neat back heel. They get to the end line toward the top of the six-yard box. Richmond do enough to defend that away. That's Spokane starting the second half as they began the first. On the front foot, on the attack. Three red shirts around that ball and they win it back. Spokane a little bit exposed here. What can Richmond make from this? Left footed strike from distance flies over the bar. Wasn't too far away from Adrian Bilhart, the scorer of their goal in the first half. And he is capable of hitting them from there. Had no hesitation about doing so. Carlos Marancio, who made one crucial one-on-one -on -one stop in the first half. That was early on against Nil Vignoles. That was when it was 1-0. Free kick won by Zaka Moran. Jack Denton, the one whistled for that. But if you can't watch the match, turn on Sirius XM FC 157, North America's only 24-7 source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, plus hear live matches from the USL, MLS, Premier League, and more, all on Sirius XM FC 157 and the new Sirius XM app. Space here in that attacking third. But it vanishes quickly. Griffin Garnett, 17 years old, the ECNL player of the year. Able to win that back for Richmond. And they build out of the back. Darren Sawatsky, always proud of his Richmond kicker's side and the way they like to possess the ball and play soccer as he says it. He always talks about how they want to move the game forward and not play bunker ball from the 90s. Those are his words he's used over the last couple of years. Did that stay in play? Apparently so. Richmond pressing high. And they earn an attacking throw. Good work by the men in red. Three minutes into the second half. Nil Vignoles. Griffin Garnett. Maxi Schenfeld had a bit of a shaky start in the first half, but like the rest of his teammates, grew into it as it went on. Dakota Barnathan moving it quickly. This is a good spell for Richmond.
who actually led at League One in average possession last year. Had trouble translating that into goals, especially in the second half of the season when Emmy Martinez was out. This cross claimed by Marancio. Zawatsky talked this week about needing to stop Spokane's counterattack. Well, got burned by it in the fourth minute as there's a turn leading to a foul in that center circle. You see that contact again. Saka Moran got the foot in on Jack Denton. Space opening up again. Down that left side. Cross to the top of the six. Again, though, the red shirts able to get in the way. Now a little spell for Spokane. Space to attack on that left flank. Worked around the back, Marcelo Lage. Patient possession here from Velocity. Of a heavy touch back, but recovered and possession kept. This is really patient play from Spokane, and now they find a route forward. They find a cross as well toward that end line. They'll be out for a throw. That was going to be a corner otherwise. See all that great Velocity merch being sported by the fans in the front row there. Lining up for the long throw. Launched into the six yard box, headed on and just wide. And I think it clipped the foot of the post. Marcelo Lodge almost found the third goal for Spokane. Oh, Richmond scored their goal in the first half from a long throw. Spokane nearly returned the favor here. The trebuchet into the box, Lodge just missing. Well, they win it back. Spokane now pressing for that third goal. A miscommunication there between Hill and Pierre Reedy, but Hill able to work it along. Metonair, Longmire, Lodge, and Waldeck. Spokane with a long spell of possession now. Well, Velocity fans, scan the QR code to get your single match tickets today. Opportunity might open up here on the edge of the box, and Dalling takes over. Choosing to pull it back to heel. Crossed by Jack Denton, but came off a man in red. Possession continues for Spokane Velocity. Metanair in the fourth, Longmire in the 15th for them. Bill Hart in the 20th for, for Richmond. They won the Supporters' Shield, remember, in League One two years ago. Had the best record in the regular season. For a disappointing campaign by their high standards last year.
First time they've had a chance to work their way forward in quite a while. Misfiring on the ball along that touch line. Dalling able to get to that ball first and keep it in. And that's exactly what you want your center forward doing. Your team's defending, you get them out, you keep possession, win a throw, get your whole team up the pitch. Long ball. Again, it's going to stick up on this surface, but not enough. Ronnie Smith racing after it. It's a goal kick. Nearly 10 minutes into half number two. About 45 minutes from kickoff in Charlotte, where Charlotte Independence will face one Knoxville. Now down the left side comes Maxi Schenfeld. Shenfield, long cross, back post, just slightly over hit. Can it be kept in play? Yes, it can. And then the nutmeg. And here come the kickers on that end line, put back into the middle. Danger not fully cleared by Spokane, but now it will be as the whistle goes for a foul. To Richmond's frustration. That was the best moment from them in this second half. Look at this nutmeg. That's Hadrian Bilhart. The scorer of their goal is nearly scored and set up a couple others. Very much showing why they went out and got him this offseason. One of those proven winners that Darren Sawatsky was talking about. And in a difficult game that began about as poorly as it could from their standpoint in this hostile environment, this raucous crowd that they're facing. Steered them back into the game and has almost pulled them level a couple times. And coming up in a little bit over an hour, Tormenta and forward Madison. And then later tonight, out west, Central Valley Fuego in their home opener under Jermaine Jones against Union Omaha. Intriguing matchup there. First game of the year for the Owls, who were last year's Supporters' Shield winners. Chested down, struck ambitiously by Hill. Goal kick. It's out of character, really, for Luis Hill. Again, doesn't usually look to shoot. Scored just three goals over the last couple of years. Has had plenty of assists. Very rarely strikes from distance like that, but decided to have a try. Schenfeld. It's moving deftly by James Vaughn. They can continue this attack now. Bill Hart. Vaughn has gone down and is staying down. This is Good from Richmond's standpoint. Not sure what happened there to James Vaughn, but he is clearly feeling the effects of it. It's the first injury stoppage we've had today. It's been a free-flowing game. Played at great tempo. Not many whistles, not many fouls, not a lot of set pieces even. We'll see if we can see what happened to James Vaughn. Oh, maybe just stepped on there on the follow-through by Pierre Reedy. Yeah, that doesn't feel good when you take a full shoe's worth of studs to the top of your foot. It's the opportunity for a de facto hydration break, and you see Richmond readying two substitutions. These will be the first two changes of the match for either side. It's going to be Justin Suko coming on along with Arthur Boshua. Suko was with them last year. Boshua was not. He was with Tormenta the last couple of seasons, although didn't play much last year since he was injured early in the year. And I spend most of the season on that injured list. The guy who's very capable in the box. He scores goals, especially with his head, a real threat from aerial balls. We saw him score some gorgeous headers for Tormenta back in 2022.
Looks like James Vaughn will be making way after picking up that knock. Not sure if he was about to be substituted anyhow, but he will make his way off, and Justin Suko takes his place. Polite applause from the home fans for James Vaughn as he makes his way off the pitch. Vaughn slowly making his way off. And Suko can come on. And Boshua makes his way onto the field as well. And he replaces Nicholas Simmons. So it's the right side of that attacking midfield trio. That's where Suko takes his place. And then Boshua takes Simmons' spot up top as that center forward. An hour gone in this first ever match at One Spokane Stadium. Gone 40 minutes since our last goal. Didn't look like we would go that long without one, the way this game started. Things have calmed down a bit. They could spark back to life at any moment. If you want an example of Arthur Boshua's ability to score with his head, you can watch the highlights of Tormenta's win at Charleston Battery in the U.S. Open Cup a couple of years ago. He scored the only goal in it. There was hardly anybody there because there was a storm the day before that postponed the match. And so they played it the next morning in front of basically an empty crowd. But Boshua scored this really gorgeous header. This is going to be the first corner of the match for Richmond. Boshua had to crane his neck far back behind his body as he leapt in midair and planted it into the top corner. One of the better headers you'll see at any level. So that's what he's capable of and could they find his head here? Maxi Schenfeld will take their first corner, presented by ICCU, your financial success fan club. Schenfeld ready to swing this in with his left foot. Bosch was standing right on top of the goalkeeper. And toward that six yard box it went, but dealt with well, only as far as Vignoles. Vignoles wrestling for it, again using that skill and close control, thinking he'd won a free kick, and he has. Home fans moan that Neil Vignoles will have a chance to deliver something from this near touchline now. Again, we'll see the excellent skill from Vignoles in tight quarters. It's one of the things that makes him such an effective midfielder when he's on his game. Colin Fernandez gave away the free kick. Interesting where this ball has been placed because I don't think that's where the foul occurred. I think Vignoles has stolen a good few yards inside that touch line, but the referee has allowed him to do that. And so it'll be a two-man wall for Spokane. Would Vignoles go for goal here? You also have Maxi Schenfeld standing around it with his left foot. See Marancio shaded toward that far post. And all those red shirts piled up toward that back stick. Vignoles takes. Vignoles goes for goal, and it was flicked just over. And that was Boshua, who got on the end of it, but couldn't get over it. Was it off Boshua's head? Apparently off a defender last. It will be another corner. I thought it was Boshua who had that skin skim off his head. No, it was the defender, wasn't it? Ahmed Longmire got in the way. I'm not sure if Vignoles was trying to go directly for goal. He had Boshua making that near post run. Really intelligent movement from Boshua. And then the corner swung in sharply, comes to the edge of the box. Fitch nodded it down, not able to pick out a teammate with it though, and then committed the foul. And that's a frustrating sequence for Richmond. It's a really promising situation. Needless foul to give away. A good spell of pressure from a couple set pieces. Boshua still lobbying and complaining about the decision. But again, Richmond, just like last year, perhaps vulnerable from defensive set pieces, very dangerous from attacking sets. Applause now from the home fans as they make their first change of the day. Andre Lewis is coming on for them. There he is.
This ball kept in play. Spokane would love to restore their two goal advantage. By that end line, they'll have a corner. That will be another ICCU corner kick, your financial success fan club. Luis Hill will take it from that far stick, that far corner. Spokane piling bodies on the goal line. And Yannick Rothfuss tells Hill to hold up and will arbitrate some of that tussling. Looks like he's pulled two particular players aside. So that apparently has been sorted out. And now Hill can deliver. Toward the near post, it was flicked on. Dangerously, bicycle kick effort. Well, spectacular attempt, didn't really catch it cleanly. Could have been an early goal of the season candidate if he'd made contact a bit more squarely. And let's see it again. Hill having had to wait all that time to swing it in. That was Longmire who scored in the first half with his head. Would have been a far more spectacular goal if he'd completed it. It is another corner. Again, ICCU corner kick, your financial success fan club. It's time to be taken with a left-footed in-swinger. Again, Spokane trying to cause all kinds of chaos in the goal mouth. Pile bodies in front of Pablo Hara. Back post it goes over everyone's head. And out for a goal kick this time. Well, Richmond hanging in at just a goal down. And they're going to have a free kick here, just inside their attacking half, as we're nearly three quarters of the way through the 90. Spokane seeking their first points as a club. Richmond in their first game of the year. Looking to turn the page fully on a tough 2023. Lots of space on the right to deliver a ball in. But headed clear by Longmire. Final quarter of the 90 minutes now. That pass cut out. Can Spokane connect through the middle and counter? It's Hill looking to go over the top for Dalling. And Dalling plays this down. Josh Dalling pulls back, top of the area, shot was blocked. Chased down by Andre Lewis. His first real involvement since coming on a few minutes ago. He replaced Jack Denton in that midfield double pivot. He can always tell his grandkids that he was the first ever substitution at the new one Spokane Stadium. That one perhaps a slightly more obscure honor, but an honor nonetheless. Here come the kickers, though, still seeking that equalizing goal. Out comes Carlos Marancio. Player down for Spokane, and I believe that's Colin Fernandez. 
Well, scan the QR code to play now. Footballer Fuel for your guarantee to win one of 20 unique participating Spokane and Coeur d'Alene local restaurant discounts. Thank you to our Footballer Fuel partners, Caruso's, De Leon's Taco and Bar, The Burger Dock, Flat Stick Pub, TT's Barbecue, Jimmy John's, Casa Tap House, IHOP, and Steam Plant Restaurant and Brew Pub. See Fernandez having that right leg work done. Turned into a relatively warm afternoon in this bright sunshine. And while he's receiving treatment, we'll let you know that a new era of USL kicks off in April. Join us Saturday, April 6th on CBS as Louisville City FC takes on Indy 11 at 4 p.m. Eastern at Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville, kicking off the first ever national broadcast of the USL on the CBS networks. It'll be a tremendous milestone for USL. Colin Fernandez trying to mountain climber his way out of perhaps a cramp. So Spokane for the moment playing with 10 while they figure out whether Fernandez can continue or not. Into the final 20 minutes, plus stoppage time. Still the goals in the 4th and 15th by Metanair and Longmire, holding up for Spokane, despite the 20th minute reply from Adrian Bilhart for Richmond. Spokane, this is a slick move down the left now. Charging into the box, looking for a penalty, but the referee says that was all ball, play on. Hear the feelings of this capacity crowd. Heavy challenge there, which is blown down, and it's going to be the first card of the day. Luis Hill into the book in the 72nd minute. Now again, we haven't had a ton of whistles. It is the first caution, but yeah, clearly late with that challenge, Luis Hill. Don't think he can have any complaints. He also has an assist today. Uh, delivery from the corner in the 15th that Longmire headed home. This is a throw for Richmond. See those shadows just starting to creep from the near side onto the pitch. What can the kickers create here? They work it well out wide. Bill Hart. Spokane set up in their defensive ranks, not leaving much space to play through them. This is Cole. Griffin Garnett has not looked out of place today as a 17-year-old. That's why he's in there, of course. You're good enough, you're old enough. That's what Darren Zawatsky said this week. And now the counter might be on for Spokane. Just two in the attack. Dalling is one of them. Into the box he goes. And a fairly tame shot in the end. Might have come off the defender's foot. It is taken by Hara. Cole. Richmond could snatch a point from this game. That would be a tremendous result from them, especially with the way they started. Schenfeld, long cross, nobody home there in red. Arthur Beauchois is a big guy, but not quite that tall.
Well, Windermere Foundation is thrilled to welcome our charity of the month. It's more than a home, it's a way to give back. Please visit our site at www.windermerefoundation.com. That ball stayed in play. Dakota Barnathan back to Pablo Hara. The hour starting to grow a bit late for Richmond now. Reduce the deficit to just a goal in the 20th minute. Neither side has found the back of the net since. Hara goes long. That's really good distribution by him. Bill Hart tried to take and turn all in one motion. Not quite able to do so. Lodge clears to midfield. Where it's touched down by Moran. Now Spokane would figure to have some opportunities on the counter here in these final minutes as long as they continue to lead by a goal. Richmond are going to have to take more chances in the attack. And this is a Spokane throw. You get a glimpse of that capacity crowd in the near side stands, the main stand at this new facility. So we're into the final 15 of the 90. What a deft touch that is. And it might set Spokane away on the break. Dowling is screaming for the ball on the near side. Instead, the overlap. Luis Hill has to slow things a bit. Didn't quite pick the right option there, but still might make something from this. Dowling trying to shield it off. Comes down for the strike. And what a chance for Andre Lewis from the penalty spot, and he scuffed it high and wide. Well, that was a really good look to make it 3-1. And if Richmond are able to rally late and steal a point here, as you see the miss hit by Andre Lewis, look back at that moment as the chance for Spokane could have put it away. Andre Lewis from Jamaica. He's had three caps with the Jamaican national team. Quality player. He's with Hartford Athletic the last couple of years. He scored eight goals in total for them, so he knows where the net is. Just did not make the contact he wanted on that occasion. Looks like Spokane are readying a couple changes and they have had Roman Metanier down by that touch line. You saw him scoot off the field of play. Looks like he's feeling that left leg area. Don't normally see as much cramping up in the early season. It's not as hot yet, but, and you're dealing with a shorter preseason these days as well. So players that will be more 90 minutes match fit in a month or two. Maybe not quite all the way there yet. Back to live action and Richmond still in search of that equalizing goal. Maxi Schenfeld. Long switch to Bill Hart. Boshua shouts for handball. Richmond, big appeals for handball. Nothing given by Yannick Rothfuss. Darren Sawatsky insistent on the touchline. I think Rothfuss telling him to get back in his technical area. And now the changes will come for Spokane. We'll see if we can see that potential handball again in a moment. First, Morgan Hackworth is going to come on along with Javier Hill. Maxi Schenfeld imploring the fourth official. Well, let's see what we can see. Ooh. Well, the well-worn cliche, you've seen them given. That one was not. And the yellow card has been shown, I think, for descent. We'll get clarification on 
who that was shown to. That is Zaka Moran, I believe, who was carded. So now those substitutions are made. Javier Martin Hill is usually a right sided defender, a right back. We saw Richmond making a change too, sending Chandler O'Dwyer onto the pitch. He replaces Zaka Moran, who will not hang around with his newly awarded yellow card. Bill Hart was replaced as well by Tony Pineda. So a double change made by Darren Sawatsky for these final 10 minutes plus stoppage time. Flying defensive header there. First action for Javier Hill and he wasted no time. Well, Richmond were insistent that they should have had a penalty on what could have been given as handball against Ahmed Longmire. If you've watched soccer around the world over the last couple of years, you know that what is interpreted as handball and what is not, and it's always been a contentious issue. It's become even more so in recent seasons. You never quite know when it's going to be given and when it's not. The laws are always open to interpretation and subjectivity. When you saw that one replay that we did see, it is one of those that has been given before. Was not on this occasion. Here's Justin Succo, trying to create something, does well, keeps it alive for Schenfeld. Now space in the middle. Left-footed effort deflected wide and hops out for a corner. And Richmond asking questions as they try to finally pull level in this match. It'll be an ICCU corner kick, your financial success fan club. Neil Vignoles will take it. In from Vignoles, back post, not clear yet. Back into the mix it goes, good header away by Longmire. Along that end line, sliced out of play. Which way will it hop? It is a throw for Richmond, not a corner. Bounce the other side of that corner flag. The long throw will be readied by Chris Cole. Winches the catapult, launches it in. But it's dealt with by the defense. Only as far as Suko puts it right back in. Again, it was Longmire. He's been gigantic in the box multiple times today. Swung back post again. Spokane dealing with those aerial balls into their own box pretty effectively today. Richmond have not gotten a lot of joy from those yet. Sent long, Dakota Barnathan after it. To keep that in play, he did. And then the cross overhit. We've seen a handful of overhit crosses from Richmond today in pretty promising situations. And then they commit the foul. And the home side will have a free kick as those seconds continue to tick away. Seven minutes plus stoppage time remaining. That's how close Spokane are to their first ever victory and their first three points in club history. <laughs> Well, eFootball 2024 is here. Live your dream, rep your team, and play as your favorite USL Championship club. eFootball is free to play. Download now. Free kick taken by Marancio. Heard the official attendance announced a big applause. 5,086. Well done to everyone in Spokane. And with Spokane Velocity FC packing one Spokane Stadium for the first ever match here. 
historic day. The only question now is how will it end? Richmond free kick. It has been 2-1 since the 20th minute when Adrian Bilhart pulled the kickers back into this after they had been rocked onto the ropes in the opening 15. They are still searching for that equalizing goal. They might have a chance here. Wouldn't quite sit down. Vignol's tussling for the follow-up again is whistled. Of course, with the lead, Spokane not in any hurry to take these free kicks. You would think we would have a decent amount of stoppage time. We have had a couple of injury stoppages in this second half, which we didn't have in the first. So five minutes plus. Still for Spokane to navigate, still for Richmond to find another goal. We have an attacking throw here. First, it appears there will be a substitution. Looks like Cameron Miller is getting ready to come on and it appears he'll replace Luis Hill. He receives a rapturous ovation. Undeservedly so, assisted on the second goal, which right now would be the winner. So Cameron Miller on in his place. defending to do here along with his teammates. Griffin Garnett. Chris Cole. Raking it backside. Again over hit a bit but it's going to spin out. It is a corner. Those deliveries on those deep crosses just a bit too much repeatedly from Richmond today. They've gotten themselves into good positions to put dangerous balls into that danger spot. thing that you would think will improve as the year goes on. Their situation could improve right now. Corner kick, in swinger, again dealt with well. Not out though. And Vignal strikes against the defender. They recycle it once more. Again Spokane able to get the initial head to it. The corner saved for now. O'Dwyer down. Vignal's jinking into the box. O'Dwyer again. Still O'Dwyer. A couple of half-hearted half shouts for a penalty. We play on. Right. Spokane giving it away. And it comes back at them. And that's a gorgeous ball toward the end line. Chance for the cutback. But the cutback was lacking. Well, they got themselves into a great position there, but unable to pick anyone out in red. And Spokane hanging on now in these final minutes. Richmond continue to knock urgently. Header flicked down, not a great header. Edge of the box though. That swung clear toward midfield and Josh Dalling trying to hold up play but could not. Richmond applying the pressure. Spokane holding up under it so far. Vignoles. Schenfeld. Cross took a deflection. Back header along by the penalty spot. Eluded everyone. Gotten to by Arthur Beauchois. They'd really like to have him in the box instead of on the periphery of it. Now Vignoles. Suko. And off the defender, another corner coming for the visitors as we enter the 90th minute. 
One more ICCU corner kick, your financial success fan club. Is there a late twist today? Or will Spokane hang on? Vignoles clips the outswinger toward the penalty spot. Whistle goes, free kick for Spokane. Boshua got there, but maybe committed an infraction in the process. Carlos Marancio will take all the time he's allowed to. In just a few moments, we will look to the fourth official to see how much time will be added on at the end of this one. This is going to be a precious throw for the home side. It will allow them to chew some more time off that clock. Well, you hear the groans from the home fans because it is seven minutes at minimum to be played in addition at the end of this second half. So, still time for Richmond to salvage a point today. Still work for Spokane to do to protect all three. They'll have another throw, that's good work by Dolling. And they'll be able to consume most of the first minute of that additional seven. Vinyals trying to help Richmond get out. Falls to Boshua, who does well. Trying to clip a teammate down that right flank. Vinyals and free kick. Oh, they wanted advantage played there, Richmond. They were away. That's an unfortunate whistle for them. Now the referee pulls it back, and boy, the kickers are frustrated. And I think they're going to be carded. Looks like Vignoles will go into the book late on in stoppage time. Remember, Richmond thought they should have had a penalty about 15 minutes ago. What they felt was handball. And they felt advantage should have been played there to allow a promising attack to continue, where they were three on three. Now Spokane able to pull all those white shirts back into position. This is a good run, though, from Griffin Garnett. And then raked across that area, but the header never threatening. Carlos Morancio, who's able to pluck it and fall on it and consume more time. Can Richmond create one more big chance in stoppage time? They certainly still have time, too. Vignoles does well to tenaciously win it back. That's a dangerous ball, and it's one back by Spokane. Lewis had it run away from him. Here he is now. Andre Lewis interchanging on the edge of the box. Still Lewis. Might fall to Dalling. Didn't quite. Shouts for a penalty. Referee waves those away. And then Vignoles clipped from behind. Free kick. Frantic sequence. They want to get on with it here, the kickers, and they do. That's not the best delivery from Vignoles. And the challenge was won by Cameron Miller, which allows his team to work their way up. It's all gotten scrappy laid on. Almost halfway through the additional seven minutes. O'Dwyer wide to a pair of red shirts. They can overlap there. Delivery deflects through. Juggled up in the air, just wouldn't sit down yet. O'Dwyer has it back. Shouts for offside. Fitch plays it now. The linesman's flag stays down. Fitch looks to deliver. 
And again, a player in white there to flick it away with the head. They've done that time and time today. Late attacking throw for Richmond, and they'll ready that long one with Chris Cole. Cole with the run up. He launches. Comes to the edge of the box. Chance to strike. It deflects off the bar. Richmond that close to a late equalizer. They still have it though with Vignoles. Clipped along. Out comes the goalkeeper, Marancio. He's got it. Spokane can breathe. They still lead with two and a half minutes to go. Let's see just how close Richmond came. Bang. It rattled the frame. Hmm. That was Maxi Schenfeld who struck it sweetly with the left foot. It was just an inch away from leveling it in stoppage time. Was that the last chance for Richmond today? They come forward again. They do still have time to create another. Two minutes to play. That ball cut out, heavy touch, so it goes out for a throw. Spokane clinging on. Scored two goals in the first 15 minutes. Trying to hang on for all three points today. It's Cole. It's Schenfeld. It's Barnathan. It's Vignoles. Pops back side. More shouts for a penalty. Referee looks. What is he given? Yannick Rothfuss. I think he's given the corner. He took a good long time to think about it, the referee. And we're into the final minute of stoppage time. A late ICCU corner kick. Your financial success fan club. The inswinger. And it's up into the air and then stamped over the bar. Another corner coming. It was deflected off a defender. Otherwise, that might have been a last minute equalizer for Tony Pineda. They'll have one more corner from the near side. Again, presented by ICCU. And this time, Vignoles will take. Quite possibly the last chance of the day for Richmond. In from Vignoles, on top of goal. Morancio punches away. Big roars from this big crowd. It'll be a throw by the corner flag. Have Spokane done enough? One more long throw to defend. Here comes the trebuchet. And there's Morancio to pluck it out of the bright sky. And they feel they're there. Listen to this crowd. There's the rumble. Referee hasn't blown yet. Is there time for one more attack for Richmond? Here they come. On we play. Over the top it goes. Shielded off well. Attack still alive. The cross comes off a defender. Corner. One more for Richmond. The crowd asking where this additional time has come from, but of course, stoppage time indicated is a minimum. And so one more ICCU corner kick, your financial success fan club. Richmond have to have this corner ended success for them to steal something today. Here comes the inswinger, driven in low, headed out, edge of the box, Suko miscontrolled. There's the final whistle, it is history. It's up the falls in Spokane. They take down Richmond in their home debut for their first ever victory. Spokane Velocity outlast Richmond kickers today. A valiant effort by the kickers after they were clobbered early and looked like they would be swamped. They gave Velocity a mighty struggle in the end, but Spokane did enough. They hung on, they defended with their lives. Richmond rattled the frame. 
They came close on several occasions, but never could find that second goal. And Spokane wins it by a final of two goals to one. Highlights and stats in your wrap-up next. FC on Saturday, March 23rd, and Central Valley Fuego FC on Saturday, April 27th. Get your tickets now. Spokane is the home to the highest level of professional women's soccer in the country. Spokane Zephyr FC will play at one Spokane Stadium this August. Get your season tickets now. The winds of change are blowing. Be a part of history with your Zephyr FC. At Eastern Washington University, students and faculty work side by side to restore a lost prairie and decrease our carbon footprint. Composers are writing music to help us understand how salmon migrate. And urban and regional planning students partner with cities to gather the data they need to address homelessness interdisciplinary education that gets real about the real world. That's Eastern Washington University and you. Well, what a day it was here in Spokane in front of a sellout crowd, the first ever match at one Spokane Stadium and the home side with their first ever victory in club history. They defeat Richmond Kickers by two goals to one. Let's see the highlights from the 90 minutes today. And it started in the fourth minute. Couldn't have been a better start for Spokane Velocity. Probably intended as a cross, but ends up a goal for Roman Metaner, who can always say he scored the first ever goal at this gorgeous new facility. And Spokane Velocity were off and running. They would double their lead in the 15th minute. Luis Hill on our Coors Light play of the match. Back post header, what a header it was from Ahmed Longmire. And it was 2-0. Watch that gorgeous delivery again from Hill. And it's not an easy header, too. Fading away, back across goal. That was so well done by both deliverer and the finish. Five minutes later, it was 2-1. Richmond got themselves right back into it. Adrian Bilhart off a deflected ball. He slammed it in first time. Gorgeous finish. It was 2-1 just 20 minutes in, and it looked like we might have a lopsided or a, a crooked scoreline today, I should say. But that turned out to be the last goal of the day as Spokane hung on the rest of the afternoon and they come away with a historic victory. Darren Sawatsky will be proud of how his side fought after such a tough start. But boy, will Lee Viedman be proud of his side with their first ever win. Hope you've enjoyed it. For our entire production crew, I'm Donnie Barnes. Good afternoon from one Spokane Stadium. We're in front of a historic crowd on a historic day. It was Spokane Velocity FC 2, Richmond Kickers 1. broadcast or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League League One.